day group 12s my name is Kadet Mazokere and I would like to welcome you to a video that's going to prepare you for the final exam now what I'm going to do in this video is that I'm going to uh, show you the essays that came in 2022 November and then I'm going to show you also essays that came in 2023 September because I'm doing this video two days before the final exam for 2023 November 2023 so this video is going to have uh, paper one essays and paper two essays so paper one is going to be written in two days uh, from today and paper two is going to be written nine days from today okay so let's get started now uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is the essays that came for paper one 2022 as you can see so in question five well, as always, I recommend question five because question five is macroeconomics and macroeconomics, I find it to be easier than economic pursuits. However, I'm not telling you to answer question five. I'm just saying it's your easier option. OK, so the, the, the essay that came last year or 2022 was discussing detailed features underpinning forecasting. Well, what I want to show you here is that um, we already have so many marks uh, before we even get started, before we even un start answering the question. All we need to know is the headings, first and foremost. So what I want to show you here is that you get marks for headings. You don't get marks for headings if the headings were given to you, because sometimes they will specify what they want you to talk about. And it's not always that they tell you what they want you to talk about. But let me show you. So in this case, it says just discussing detailed features and appealing forecasting. So we already know that, OK, we have leading, lagging, coincident and composite indicators. So we have four headings there. We also have moving average. We have length. We have amplitude. We have extrapolation. So you discuss all those things. I think I mentioned what? Let me see. Four indicators, length, um, amplitude, moving average, extrapolation. So we have eight headings there. So you already have eight marks of the 26. So you're, and now you get one mark per heading. So any point you come up with. So with your eight headings, if you could say one thing about these eight headings, one thing, uh, it's eight times two, which is 16. So you already have 16 plus 16 for, you know, your points which gets two marks each and you have your eight marks for the headings already you have 16 plus eight that is 24 now you only need two marks so if one of your headings you can have two things uh, or, or one example from two headings already you, you have 26 marks so it's that easy it's that simple now some of you may be wondering do you really get marks for headings you see just now because i'm going to show you the memo then question six said discuss in detail South Africa, South Africa, South African growth and development policies and strategies, um, strategic initiative since 1994. Okay, so they want you to talk about uh, the policies that South Africa has implemented since 1994 to try and address the imbalances of the past. Okay. And I'm, by the way, I'm going to just focus on the main part. The, the, the additional part, I may have a separate video for that. Okay, so if that was the case, this is what I was mentioning. Do you see that? You just saying leading indicator, you get one mark. And you just having one point on leading indicator, you have two marks. Then you go to coincident indicators. You just knowing what coincident indicators are, you get two marks. So. If you were to give one point for leading, one point for coincident, already you have two marks here, you have two marks there, then you have these two marks. So you have two, four, six, already you have six marks. Just to say leading indicators, you tell us what it is. Le uh, coincident indicators, you tell, tell us what it is. You go to uh, composite, you go to legging. So just by the indicators then you also go to length moving average extrapolation uh, uh, uh and so on now that gives you marks so you see how easy that is moving on um uh, the second essay like i said policies that were implemented 
look, you knowing that there was the Black Economic Empowerment Act, uh, that's one mark, and you telling us what it is, that's two marks. Uh, expanded Public Works Program, one mark, telling us what it is, two marks, and the rest. So here, I'm just proving to you that you get marks for just knowing the headings. The only time you don't get marks, like you'll see, is when they give you an, uh, headings that they want. Let's look at question five. And for paper two, I recommend question five again. That is microeconomics. So I think microeconomics and macroeconomics are your ticket. That's what I think. I'm not saying you should follow what I'm saying. I'm just suggesting. Now, with the aid of um, three separate graphs, so you need to draw three graphs according to what you are told here. Discuss the short run equilibrium positions. Now, they want you to discuss economic profit, economic loss, and normal profit in a perfect uh, market. Now, if they say, with the aid of clearly labeled graphs, or with the aid of maybe three or four or five, whatever, they tell, discuss the short run equilibrium positions for a perfect competitor. Now, if they don't give you this, they would award you marks for you saying, Heading number one, economic profit. Heading number two, economic loss. Heading number three, normal profit. Now that you were given, there is no way they will award you marks for you writing economic profit because they already gave you the heading. So they wouldn't give you marks for that. Now, so basically, uh, that's what would happen. Then let's look at this one. Discuss in detail measures taken by government to ensure environmental sustainability. So you knowing the measures taken by the government, your headings will earn you marks. Let's find out. You see, like I said here, there is no tick for this heading. But you see, you're getting ticks for, uh, let me see, correct positioning and labeling of curves, cost curves. So we have your AC, you have your MC. So if you position them correctly, by correctly they mean the MC cuts the AC at its lowest point. So that's basically what we look at. So if the MC cuts the AC at its lowest point, we're going to award you a mark. And if you label your cost curves, we'll give you a mark. Then correct positioning and labeling of your revenue curves. So we have these ones. D is equal to AR and equal to MR. Then you get a mark. Then you get another mark to indicate the break uh, even point. In this case, we are showing uh, an economy, a normal profit, which is this point here. Point E, they give you a mark there. Uh, they are mentioning it here as break even point, but yes, but, uh, because that's where you break even. Then we also have uh, labeling of your axis. It's very important for you to write your, your price cost the revenue on this side, or you can just say price, then you have quantity on this side. So your axis, you get one mark for that. And then uh, labeling of axis uh, that is like you saying T, uh, P or Q or 110, something like that. So you, you, I prefer to put numbers. So 10 rent, 100 units. Okay, so something like that will earn you marks as easy as that. Okay, the other one, these are the measures that we're talking about in question six. So the first measure is granting property rights. This is what government can do to ensure environmental sustainability so you knowing that government can grant property rights uh, you get a mark then you knowing what that means you get two marks uh, charging for the use of the environment one mark two marks so it's important and these headings you will see i'll show you just now okay so let's jump into the essays that came um in this year 2023 in our prelim exam so what i'm going to show you is i'm going to show you all the provinces uh, unfortunately, I could not get uh, essays for, is it Western Cape? Yes, Western Cape. So everything I'm going to show you here will be showing you um, all the other provinces except for Western Cape. So uh, if, if we have learners from Western Cape, they can join us in the comment section down below and tell us what the essays were and uh, would appreciate maybe to comment on that and help everyone here. So let's have a look here. For how dang paper one, the first essay or question five was discussing detailed reasons for public sector failure. Now, this essay 
is a new essay in terms of uh, 2021 to 2023 because prior to that we had 2017 to 2020 and uh, our essay there was discussing detailed problems of public sector provisioning so they want you to link this with um, a typical problem experienced through public sector provisioning this was our essay before the new exam guidelines so this is now our essay uh, we want you so what what headings would you put that's what we want to see question six the essay was discuss in detail social uh, south africa social indicators now for where we have a mnemonic i'm going to show you in green that yes this particular essay when it comes this is a mnemonic that can help you and these two essays i do have mnemonics for you okay let's look at the first reasons for public sector failure so we have here what we want you to discuss is those seven headings and already those seven headings are going to earn you seven marks then uh, if you were to come up with at least a point for each that will give you 14 so 7 14 21 so you have 21 marks so you need you know extra points somewhere somehow but at least the minimum the bare minimum know your seven headings and uh, also uh, know at least something about it if you can come up with an example where you explain something that can help because that will earn you some marks now the mnemonic i have for the first essay here is my little brother play soccer at sundowns now you see the m there in my stands for management failure the l in little stands for lack of motivation the b in brother stands for bureaucracy the p in place stands for politicians the s in soccer stands for structural weaknesses the at the a in ad stands for apathy and the s in sundowns stands for uh, special interest groups so my little brother plays soccer at sundowns can help you earn seven marks once you get those seven marks it can help you earn 14 marks and then you can have more points or examples for you to earn your 26 marks so that's not that difficult let's move on to the next essay and you are going to find out that this essay appeared in most of the essays uh, for prelim exams the essay said discuss in detail south africa's social indicators so for social indicators i have the mnemonic here you see it here in green Daihan. now the d in Daihan stands for demographic indicators now this one you can get 20 marks just for headings you haven't even said anything but already you have 20 marks of the 26 so how do learners fail i have no idea i don't know how you guys fail you just go out of your way to fail because there's no way it's easy this is simple so master this Daihan. the d that's your demographic indicators now once you think of demographics uh obviously the word population must pop in your head and then life expectancy the i well when you check in some instances the i is not there anymore but i've put it the i that's your income distribution indicator now for income distribution we check the gini coefficient which measures the gap between the rich and the poor and it's that number between zero and one uh, let me not go in depth because that's not the purpose for this for this video then we also have headcount index now your your e that's your education with education there under education we want to see the percentage public sector spending on education like how much does the government spend on education in their budget and also percentage enrollment in secondary school how many kids are going to high school then we have your age your age that's your health weighs health mm, come on where's your health there is health under health we want you to discuss child mortality um how many kids are born and then they reach the age of one we also have uh, under five how many kids that are born live births where we have kids reaching the age of five we call it under five mortality we also can discuss um spending on health like uh, how much is government spending on health Right, so that's your social indicators. But looking at these two, I'd go for the first one. 
because uh, this one, yes, it's an easy essay. We have so many headings there, but I maintain that uh, macroeconomics is easy because remember there are more essays. So chances there are some essays that are difficult. I'm going to show you when it comes to economic pursuits. So when it comes to preparing for the exam, I highly recommend that you do macroeconomics because the essays that we have there are easier. Okay. The next one, we look at Eastern Cape paper one. So in Eastern Cape, we had the following essay, discuss in detail the main objectives of the state. And the, uh, okay, fine, I'll talk about the mnemonic. The next essay that they had was discuss in detail social indicators. So I'm not going to talk about social indicators since this essay has already appeared in Gauteng and I've addressed it. So I'm going to talk about the macroeconomic objectives here. So our, our mnemonic is IFEPE. E, that stands for economic growth, F, full employment, E, exchange rate stability, P, that's price stability, and E, that's economic equity. Right, I'm not going to say much about social indicators because I've uh, addressed it in the previous slide, and our mnemonic there is DIHAN. The next essay is that came in Free State, we had discussed in detail reasons for international trade. Now you're going to see that this essay appeared a lot in our prelim exams. Okay, then uh, the next one was discussing detail arguments in favor of protectionism. Now look at this. If you compare this to, I think the first one is easier than the second one. Well, not that to, not to say the second one is difficult, but there are difficult essays on in question six. It's just that they may not appear. If they do, your chances to pass may become slim. Okay, so let's look at discussing detail reasons for international trade. Now, when it comes to this essay, you need to be able to first and foremost dis, uh, distinguish demand reasons from supply reasons. So our demand reasons for international trade are as follows. Uh, size of the population, yes. We trade with other countries because of that. Income levels, I'm not going to do, go in depth with any of this, but the bottom line is we have 14 headings. And so I've shown you clearly which ones are demand reasons and which ones are supply reasons. Okay. Then the next one, our arguments, we have eight headings. So it's not always the case that uh, economic pursuits would give you more headings. In this case, you can see there are more headings under macroeconomics. Okay. So this is what we had in Free State Paper 1. Moving on to the next province, we had um, another repetition. Uh, the, the essay on international trade is repeated here in Limpopo. And the next essay was discussing detail export promotion. Okay, so this we have talked about it. Demand reasons, supply reasons, 14 marks as your heading, two marks for each point and that gives you a lot of marks. It, you can easily get your 24 marks. Okay, the next heading was discussing detail export promotion. Now with export promotion, the thing I added here is the methods. So we have incentives, we have subsidies, we have trade neutrality. Now, when we look at um, what they give us in the exam guidelines, they'll just say definitions, methods, reasons, disadvantages, but they don't really give us the headings. Okay, so our headings there, we have incentives, we have subsidies, we have trade neutrality. So just make sure that you know those three methods in which countries can promote exports. So we have six headings for paper, for, for question six, we have 14 headings for question five. Uh, moving on to the next province, we are in Northern Cape. The first heading, the, the first essay is another repetition, discussing detailed reasons for international trade. So we have our demand reasons and supply reasons, 14 headings. The next heading, the next essay was discussing detail, uh, demand side approach to promoting growth and development. So that's the one that we'll probably look at. Um, it has 12 headings. We want our monetary um, policy here, interest rate change, open market transaction, moral suasion. Uh, in some cases, you will see it as moral persuasion, but it's moral suasion. Then we have fiscal policy. Under fiscal policy, we want you to discuss a progressive personal income tax system, which is a system that we use in South Africa, where we charge high income earners more tax than low income earners. Moving on to the next province, we had northern northwest, 
In Northwest, we are discussing detailed reasons for public sector failure. Now, uh, uh, they didn't give that addition which says link it to problems of public sector provisioning like we had in Gauteng, but uh, your response is going to be the same. Uh, then question six was discussing detailed export promotion. Now this essay, I'm not going to discuss it because it's repeating already. So <clears throat> under the first one, we talked about it. We have seven essays. Our mnemonic is my little brother plays soccer at sundowns. I've already talked about this one. And we already also talked about this one. Six headings and seven headings. I would go for question five. Then moving on to Mpumalanga, we had another uh, repetition which is discussed in detail reasons for international trade. We have seen this essay already. Question six was uh, discussed in detail South Africa's initiatives or endeavors in regional development. I'd go for question five in this case. We have our demand reasons, we have our supply reasons, 14, 14 headings. In this case, the other one is special development initiatives. <clears throat> I don't know how many of you can give me points on that. <clears throat> then we have corridors, we have uh, uh, industrial development zones, IDZs, and we have special economic zones. If I ask you guys right now, who can give us a clear distinction of those four, um, trust me, you will see that many of you will struggle. And this is not the most difficult essay when it comes to question six. That is why I highly recommend question five. So make sure you know all the essays. I'll, I'll show you when I'm done with paper one, all the essays, and then I'll show you like number one to number six. Those are the ones that I recommend. Okay, when we go to KwaZulu Natal, discussing detailed reasons for international trade. We've seen this a thousand times now. Discussing detailed social indicators. We've seen this a thousand times. Demand reasons, supply reasons, Daihan. Okay, here I didn't write Daihan, but yes, you saw it, Daihan demographics income distribution, you name it. Okay, so that's it in terms of our prelim exams. So moving on to uh, all the essays and showing you which ones did not appear. This first essay discussing digital markets within a four sector model did not appear unless if it did with uh, the Western Cape. Remember I told you I did not get the question papers for Western Cape. Uh, so uh, maybe it did in Western Cape, but let's work with what we have. So with what we have, we can say uh, this essay did not appear in our prelim exams. Watch out for this essay. Number two, it also didn't appear. There is no province that gave this as an essay for our prelim exams. Discuss in detail the new economic paradigm. Yes, we know here uh, we discuss our demand side, supply side. Then essay number three also did not appear. Discussing detailed features underpinning forecasting. This one appeared in November last year. Now, I don't want you to say, uh, to try and predict, you know, like, okay, this one didn't come, so it might come. No, just make sure you study six because we have many essays here. I'm not saying study all of them. When you go for question five, go for all of them. When you go for question six, go for all of them. Don't try to predict. This gives me an idea. I think I should name this video which essay is coming. Okay. Well, I'm going to decide on the title of this video, but already I'm thinking something along those lines because learners like to predict, teachers like to predict, and I think it's a dangerous game. I go for this. Go for 06. Yes, it may help for you to know, okay, this is what came in November, uh, in September in this province. What? Uh, so basically that's giving you an awareness that, oh, so they can do it like this, they can do it like that. Where a province selected the same essay, you may find out that this province may have given the essays, like the headings, another province may have not given that the headings so those are a few differences that show you that oh okay so maybe sometimes they give you i i, I prefer that they won't give you the headings so that you get marks from just knowing the headings okay 
So this essay appeared in Eastern Cape. It says, discuss in detail the main objectives of the public sector. Reasons for public sector failure appear twice. One of the provinces was GP, the other one was Northwest. GP said, link them uh, to typical problems experienced through public sector provisioning. Uh, and and uh, this is the My Little Brother Plays Soccer at Sundowns. Ne? Right, the next one was discussing detailed reasons for international trade. This essay appeared in Free State, Limpopo, Northern Cape, Mpumalanga, and KZN. So these are our six essays. Three of them appeared, one of them appearing many times. Now, that doesn't mean it won't be in the final exam. It might. The number five might, number four might be, number three might be, number two might be, number one might be. I have no idea which of these six is going to be in the, in the, in the final exam. Uh, don't try to try and predict that, okay, they'll probably put number two. How do you know? They'll give us number one because it did not appear. How do you know? You might find out that it's number six. What I'm saying is go for all six. The next six is, oh, no, they are not six, they are seven. The next seven, first and foremost, seven essays are more than six. Why would you go for question six? Because question six, there are seven possible essays. Those essays are difficult. Let's look at the first one. Discussing detailed export promotion. Well, this one is not difficult. It appeared in North uh, Limpopo and Northwest. Number eight, uh, arguments in favor. I wouldn't say it's difficult. Free state. Uh, let's see, demand side approach, Northern Cape. This one is difficult, I can assure you. Discussing detail, the following South African growth uh, and development policies and strategic initiatives. Trust me. How many of you know the headings for this already? You will see that not many of you. Don't go for this. You might want to. I don't know. I don't know why you'd want to complicate your life like that. Just go for the first six. They are easier. Discuss in detail South Africa's initiatives. Not an easy essay. Bumalanga asked it. Discuss in detail the following economic indicators. Ooh, this one is easy. This one is easy. Uh, if it comes, mm, lucky you. Social indicators is also easy. If it comes, lucky you. So, backup plan, you may want to add, if you have time, 12 and 13, just in case they come, because they might give you a difficult essay in question five. Now, which one would you say is difficult in question five? One to six, I doubt. They are all easy. Let's look at paper two. In Gauteng, uh, our essays were discussed in detail with the aid of graphs, uh, externalities as a reason for market failure. Well, yeah, they asked it in a weird way, not to say it's not there, we know, so this would be the second essay because the first one would ask, discuss in detail uh, causes of market failure. This one would expect it to say, discuss in detail state intervention as a consequence of market failure with the aid of relevant graphs. Now, in this case, they told you externalities. So you would expect two headings there uh, because we have positive, we have negative. Okay. But other graphs that you may possibly draw is the likes of minimum wage, maximum prices, but it was not asked in this case because they were specific, they say externalities. So we have positive, we have negative. So you just had to draw two graphs here. The next one, discussing detail benefits of tourism. You will see that this essay appeared, appears more. Now they gave you businesses, they gave you infrastructure and households. Uh, we have four headings, possible headings here, but they only gave you three, and so you're not earning any marks for the headings. Okay, so for the first one, we have our two marks, because here they just say externalities. So you knowing that, oh, we have positive, you deserve a mark. We have negative, you deserve a mark. But if it's, say, discussing detail uh, with the aid of graphs, state intervention as a consequence of market failure. You draw these two graphs, 
you beyond these two you would have to draw also uh, minimum wage you would have to draw minimum prices you have, you would have to draw maximum prices okay then the last one here like i said they gave you the headings in if they don't give you your four marks that will be households businesses state and then infrastructure development now that they gave you three uh, which one do they not give here the state uh, so you you wouldn't have to talk about the state because they didn't ask you so be careful there right moving on to free state discuss in detail characteristics of a monopoly without using a graph so we have 12 criteria in which we can uh, you know compare in which we can discuss any one of the four market structures the next one discuss in detail consequences of inflation okay so our headings there would be um they say here with or without okay here they say without so you don't have to so you discuss the concept so in a way you are telling us what a monopoly is characteristics there uh well i wouldn't say it's really five here is like 17 because under characteristics you can talk about number of firms nature of product collusion demand curve productive efficiency allocative efficiency 12 things that you can discuss that's why i'm saying 17 12 under characteristics plus the five we have here so that's 17. this the next one question six discuss in detail consequences of market failure eight headings how does ah, i'm saying market failure inflation how does inflation affect debtors and creditors so you have to know in this case we're saying who benefits who, who who loses in terms of inflation if you lend money to someone because of inflation if they are not paying it with interest uh who gains who who loses they so we have eight headings there uh moving on to the next province that's limpopo discuss in detail various equilibrium position in a perfect market i like this one we have five graphs that you can draw there you can show us normal profit economic profit economic loss in the short run then we can show normal profit in the long run then we can also show the shutdown point so this was a very easy essay uh then the next one discuss in detail effects of tourism so we have like i said five headings five uh, marks then uh gdp employment poverty externalities environment and investment six marks there for effects a common one was effects and benefits of tourism in the prelim like you see discuss in detail causes of market failure now with causes of market failure i have a mnemonic i'll show you just now the next one discuss in detail benefits of tourism this one is appearing for the second time but in this case the only difference is that in eastern cape they did not give learners the headings so you had the luxury to talk about the all four headings like you saw in i forgot which province maybe it was Gauteng. they gave you three headings and so you were limited to those three but in this case you can you know go to four so first you get marks for your four headings you also get marks for discussing uh you know whatever it is that is applicable to those four headings so our mnemonic for causes for market failure oh i didn't put it it's mealy so your m is missing markets your i that's imperfect markets your e that's externalities your l lack of information your i immobility of factors of production and then imperfect distribution of income and wealth if you look at it it writes the word mealy okay let me show you how you would spell that mealy that would be m uh, i that would be e wow that would be l that would be i that would be i so we have mealy okay the next heading will be uh four uh, that's your household businesses state and infrastructure remember state was not there in the previous one okay back to my pointer next essay is northern cape uh discussing digital factors that lead to misallocation of resources this is the same essay as the previous one but the way they asked it is just a bit different but this is also mealy okay the next one discussing detailed benefits of tourism again so this is two repetitions we have our mealy here missing markets 
imperfect markets externalities that's m i e me then the li is a lack of information immobility and imperfect that's your mili okay i just didn't put it then we have our four this we talked about them just now compare and contrast the characteristics of monopoly now there's a time when i told you we have 12 criteria you will see it on this one discuss in detail measures to combat okay we haven't seen this one uh, let me show you this one we have 12 headings here uh, compare and contrast contrast any two market structures so here there were specific monopoly and monopolistic but you use number of firms nature of product entrance control over price 12. make sure you know how to compare and contrast uh, i have a table there that will show you how to do it then our measures to combat we have monetary measures we have fiscal measures we have other so we only have three headings there so i think you can see this one is easier discuss in detail monopoly with the aid of a graph okay so the, here they say they want you oh without without so you don't have to draw any graphs again you'll see it's the same thing benefits we have seen it over and over again here it says three but you know it can be concepts one two three four five we can also have um our okay here it says without so ignore the economic profit the economic loss the long run short run ignore but here you you can have 12 like what you saw in the previous slide benefits we've seen it over and over again we have gdp uh employment you name it okay next compare and contrast we've seen this 12 criteria next discussing detail effects we've seen this also we have 12 criteria here we have the six headings next oh that's that was that let's have a look at all possible essays for paper two and which ones appeared which ones did not examine in detail various equilibrium positions this is the one that i said uh we have our normal profit economic profit economic loss short run normal profit long run and lastly shutdown point okay make sure you know that discuss in detail monopoly again this will appear twice and you discuss a monopoly with or without the aid of a graph make sure you know 12 criteria number of firms nature of product collusion demand curve productive efficiency allocative decision making you name it next examine in detail an oligopoly now this one did not appear anywhere but to discuss an oligopoly you do the same you must know the number of firms nature of product demand curve collusion you name it next uh, compare and contrast you compare them using this criteria again number of firms nature of product collusion demand curve you know the same thing so these three essays one page can explain that to us that page is a table with 12 criteria and four market structures if you can master that one table you can answer three essays already one page one page make sure you know that one table that table i'm talking about it's 50 percent of your question five 50 percent discuss a monopoly discuss an oligopoly compare and contrast how do learners fail it's a mystery we don't know those learners deserve lunch number five discuss in detail how the following factors lead to the misallocation of resources market failure this one is causes of market failure two two provinces eastern cape and northern cape and as this one that's our melee missing markets imperfect markets externalities lack of information immobility imperfect distribution the last essay for question five discuss in detail state intervention as a consequence of market failure with the aid of relevant graphs our graphs are positive externality negative externality um missing ah <laughs> now i'm saying missing markets that madness uh what do you call this one minimum wage minimum prices maximum prices okay next this is now question six discuss in detail consequences of inflation under the following headings okay next discuss in detail we we saw this one in free state number seven number eight discuss in detail measures to combat inflation uh we have you know northwest asked it 
Then examine in detail effects of tourism. It appeared in three provinces. Examine in detail benefits of tourism, three provinces, okay? This one did not appear. Discuss in detail how government can ensure environment, oh, ensure sustainable development. Yes, that's what, that one was question 11. Oh, essay number 11, and no province asked it. The last one, discuss in detail the following problems and the international measures taken to uh, ensure sustainable development. So watch out for the black ones. They did not appear anyone, anywhere. I'm not saying they are the ones that will appear. Don't try to spot. Pick question five or six. Go all in. Like, don't try to predict. Okay. Now, I, don't, I didn't want this video to be long, but you know, some things are inevitable. Like, you cannot avoid because I had to explain these things nevertheless. Okay, so this has brought us, ladies and gentlemen, to the end of our video. As always, like, subscribe, and, uh, you know, comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, thank you. God bless. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, Complete and No Answers versions. Complete versions have answers and No Answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.